Hey guys, this is David with Average Joe Investing. And last week, I brought you guys an honest review and gave you guys my honest opinions on the Acorns Investing app. So this week is gonna be kind of the counterpart to that. It's gonna be another one of those apps everybody always talks about, and that's Stash Invest. So again, guys, before we get started here, everything in this video is my personal opinion. Absolutely feel free to try out these apps and formulate your own. But as always, guys, I am not sponsored by any of these guys, so I can say pretty much anything I want. I'm not paid by Stash, Acorns, or Robinhood to make any of these opinions. And for those of you guys waiting, yes, I will be doing a Robinhood one as well. You guys know that's personally the app I like to use, but don't worry, I'm gonna go over the goods and bads of that as well. But anyways, guys, today we're taking a look at Stash Invest. So let's hop over into the app. I'll show you guys some of those great things. Then we'll talk about some of the not great things and my overall grade for the app. Now, when you turn on the app, this is gonna be the very first thing that you see. And I like it, nice, simple, clean and concise. We have our portfolio value here. And to the right, it's gonna be how much it's either gone up or down in both total dollars as well as percentage. And then if we scroll down from this page, you're gonna see these articles. And if you've used any investing apps before or even any investing sites, you know that they always have kind of these little stories you can click on and they're usually pretty biased one way or the other. I actually think out of all the apps I've used, these are probably my favorite articles. They're very short, but they're not biased really at all. They kind of give you a very generic overlook using numbers and kind of facts. And then at the end, there is like one paragraph that explains why they're available and why Stash kind of partnered with that. But again, out of all these ones I've read, and I haven't read every single one on Stash, but of the articles I have read, they're much cleaner, much better, and a lot less biased and a lot less kind of driven than some of the ones on, say, Robinhood or any of the investing, you know, like CNN.com or anything like that. So next up, let's take a look at, honestly, what's probably the most important part of this entire app. And that's kind of the options you have when you're trying to invest here. So compared to, you know, say, Acorns, we only had five options and everybody fell into those five options. Here, we have almost all ETFs. There is the one right here, Roll With Buffett, that's not an ETF. You're actually just buying into Berkshire B. But for the rest of these, they're all gonna be ETFs. We actually have 36 options here, and it doesn't really stop there. You know, with Acorns, you only have five options and that's it. With Stash, yes, there's 36 different ETFs or 36 different stocks you can buy into, but that doesn't mean there's 36 options. I can choose to buy into, you know, Young Money and Wireless Wonders and that's it. I can choose to buy into 10 of these. You know, I can put 5% of my thing into Wireless Wonders and everything else into other ones. You pretty much have unlimited options here because you can invest different percentages and in just different numbers. So having 36 options times however you want to diversify your own portfolio, to me personally, is a lot better than an app like, say, Acorns, where, you know... I just pick one of five portfolios, all my money gets allocated and you're done. So that does make it a little bit harder if you're a set it and forget it kind of person. But again, we'll kind of go over a couple of the options here. It's still very easy to know pretty much nothing about the stock market and invest through Stash. Now, since we're kind of talking about the different ETFs and different options you have here, let's just click on American Innovators, which if you follow any of my series, this is one of the ones I've invested in. If we take a look right at the top here, we'll see the current value. We'll see how many shares of the company I own, which as you guys can see, I actually own less than one share of this ETF, which again, big positive here for somebody who's starting out or kind of working their way up. We don't have to buy a full share of this. So if we take a look at the bottom, the average price of a share right now is $147.15. Through many other apps and many other avenues of investing, I would have to buy a full share of this ETF. Luckily with Stash, you pay for a little bit of a convenience here, and that convenience is that I can buy a partial share. If we continue down there, we'll see I only invested 125 into this one. Total return in both dollars and percentage, so that's pretty nice to see. And then right under that is another thing that I absolutely love about this compared to many other apps. I can show you exactly what percentage of this portfolio is actually in this ETF. So for example, you guys know I love Robinhood. This is one thing I can't do. So when you're trying to build a portfolio and you know, say you really think that a good portfolio should be 40% electronics, 
you can kind of add up the numbers here and see how well diversified it is according to what you personally believe your portfolio should be. Now right on the bottom there, as we can see, there is an auto stash type of option here. So if I go into buy and sell, I can decide to either buy as a one-time thing. I can set up my bank accounts where I buy, you know, say $10 of this stock every week, $10 of this stock every month. I can set that up pretty much any way I want. So again, once you get in here and pick your ETFs, you can definitely have a set it and forget it mentality. You can still, you know, decide, hey, these are the 10 I want to buy. I'm going to evenly distribute my $10, my $30, whatever you're adding every week. And it will definitely kind of keep it up there and it'll invest for you. Again, you don't have to know a ton about these, but for those of you guys that do want to know more about this stuff, this is one of the reasons why I like this a lot better than, you know, something like Eggcorns, where we invested, it was a little harder to see what we we're investing in. If we click right here where it says overview, we can pop right in here. It'll tell you what kind of risk level this is. So, you know, does this stock fluctuate a lot, a little, or kind of somewhere in the middle? As you can see here, this one's kind of a little more in the middle. It'll give you an idea of some of the stocks in this portfolio. So, for example, for every one share of American Innovators we buy, 14.32% of that share is an Apple. And here's the other thing I really like about this, besides this listing, if we scroll down, it'll actually tell us what the name of this investment ETF is, as well as give you the ticker symbol. So we can kind of go in and see, you know, for example, hey, VGT, there's no real way for me to see, you know, how this is done, say, over the last 10 years. If I click on performance here, I can see how it did, you know, what the last price it sold for was, what it's done in the last day and year to date. And they have a couple more options here where we can kind of see where things have gone. But if we really want to do a lot of research on it, now we have the ticker symbol, we have the name of the investment ETF, we can go in and do a lot more research on these if we want to. Now, another thing that maybe this isn't important to a lot of people, but I think is really cool, if we scroll way over to the end and who owns it, it'll actually tell you what percentage of people using Stash have invested in the ETF or the option that you've selected. And then it also gives you a couple more ideas, you know, hey, if you really like American Innovators, you might like some of these other companies. So again, if you don't have a lot of kind of information or you don't really know a ton about it, I'm telling you right now, there's not really any bad options in Stash. There's definitely some that are better than others, which is nice that it gives us that ticker symbol because you can go in and do your research. But again, they do give you kind of a little bit of help along the way if you don't necessarily know what you're doing. Now, obviously there's more to this app than I just explained. But as a kind of basic overview, those are some of the things I really like about it. So again, just as a quick recap, there's tons of options here compared to apps like say Acorns. You can still buy partial shares. So again, that is one of those things where if you have less money to invest, we can slowly build that up over time rather than having to have say that whole $150 per share right now. We do have auto investing. So if you wanna link you know, a bank account here, Every time you get paid, you can invest $20, $50, whatever you want there. It does have a pretty nice interface, although we will go over that kind of in the cons as well, because there are some things that I wish were here that aren't. There's not really any knowledge necessary, but as always doing research and the more you know, the more it helps. And the articles on here, not as biased as some of the other ones. As far as I can tell, most of the articles are pretty decently written and none of them are kind of misleading like some of the articles on say Robinhood would be. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start my downs list with something that's a little controversial. Maybe some of you guys will actually like this better. Just for me personally, I'm not a huge fan. So they don't have that line chart that most other apps have where you can see how you're doing you know, on a daily basis, how you've done in the last week. The only thing they really have is this month to month option. And one of the big reasons, and it's something that Stash kind of feels is if we take a look here, right in that comments in the top right, if we pull it down, they'll say something I actually agree with. Investing is all about buying and holding, not day trading and swing trading. And that's probably why they don't have this option in here where you can see how you do weekly or even at the daily level. They like to just kind of show you by the months to show that things can build up. And I don't know, like I said, maybe this is an option so that you know, you're not, oh man, I did really bad in the last two days, I'm gonna withdraw all my money. So I can see why they do it. Just for me personally, I still like to see how I'm doing daily and weekly. So now that we got the one out of the way that's kind of my opinion as a down, let's get into my first serious down about this app. 
And if we take a look here, the moderate mix is the one that says recommended right here. And all the time throughout the app, it'll keep saying, hey, pick up this one, pick up this one. And if we take a look here, the risk level is conservative. So it's a low risk kind of option here. And that's probably why they're recommending this ETF to most people. The thing I don't like about it is they have a lot better options on this app than the moderate mix. Yet this is the one they're recommending everybody to buy. So if we take a look here, that's gonna be AOM. I'm actually gonna pop this up in Robinhood just for the sake of showing you guys kind of growth here. But AOM is kind of the moderate mix. This is the one that they're recommending you invest in. Now, if we take a look here at AOM and Robinhood, as you guys can see over the last year, we're actually up 8.33%. So that looks pretty good, you know? That's not really a bad thing there, up 8%. That's what a lot of people are kind of reaching for in terms of how their portfolio is going. But again, there's some fees and stuff there that aren't mentioned. And here's why I'm going to say I don't really like this. Because AOM is the one they're recommending everybody buys into. But let me show you just a couple of the other options you have to buy on Stash. First up, Berkshire Hathaway B, up 25.88%. Significantly better in the last year. But again, this one's a little bit more risky because this is a single stock. It's not an ETF. But... As I've mentioned, and I know other people have mentioned, Vanguard probably puts out some of the best ETFs out there. And through Stash, you can actually invest in some of them. So first of all, VGT, which is available through Stash, up 28% in the last year. We also have another Vanguard option here, MGC, again, up 19.6%. And I understand the market's absolutely in a huge bull market right now. The stock market's doing way better than, you know, it has not let's face it, the last 10, 20, 30 years. This is the best the stock market's ever been. My only issue is their app's kind of going after the people who don't know a ton about the stock market. And then they're recommending what isn't their best option. And I'm not saying, you know, hey, these are always better than these or whatever. But Vanguard's always been probably the best ETF option you have out there. So when you have the Vanguard options out here, definitely reach towards those. And this is why I'm saying you kind of have to do a little bit more research because I think there's a lot better options through Stash than the ones they necessarily recommend for you. So not a con that they have these, but definitely a con that they're recommending some options that I wouldn't take. So another con of this app is that it's definitely kind of linked for the beginning investor because your only options here are ETFs. And there's absolutely nothing wrong about building a portfolio build of nothing but ETFs. But as you kind of learn a little bit more about the stock market, you learn a little bit more about what to look for in apps. I definitely recommend, if you know, if you want to stick with some ETFs, go ahead. But I definitely recommend also investing in individual companies. And unfortunately, through Stash Invest, you're limited to just the ETFs in Berkshire B. You don't really have the option to go out there and be a stock picker. Again, kind of nitpicking but that is one drawback to this app. All right, guys, so our last couple cons are gonna be something very similar to what I said about Acorns. Unfortunately, the first one is kind of your cost of this. So same idea, a dollar per month if you're under $5,000. And same idea as before as well, it's a quarter percent per year on any portfolio that's $5,000 or more. So obviously the more money you have in this account, the more money you have to pay out. And just like Acorns, Stash, you can begin with as little as $5. But just like I said in that video, guys, if you only have $5, please don't start an account because you're realistically not going to be able to gain 20% in the first month, which is how much they're going to take out in that dollar fee. So again, be smart, do your own research on these things. But if you are going to start either Acorns or Stash Invest, I personally recommend you don't do that unless you have a minimum of $500 to start out that account. And the last thing that I want to mention in terms of cons, just like Acorns, it's not something bad about the app, it's just the competition out there. We still have the self-managed Roth IRA accounts. If you want to get something outside of the mobile app world, that's just a better account. If you guys want to stay in kind of the mobile app world, we have Robinhood, which again, I'm going to try to do a breakdown video of them as well, where I give you guys why I like them, why I don't like them, and I'm gonna have a hard time keeping that video kind of shorter, but I will probably do one big version that's gonna be pretty long about the app, 
and then I'll try to do an abridged version as well. But those are going to be kind of your cons, so let's get to my overall grade of the app. Now remember that we're kind of on a grading scale of an A to an F, a C is going to be your average. So personally, for Stash Invest, I give them a B-. minus. I think that they're slightly above the average app out there. You have tons and tons of options in terms of what you want to buy into, which ETFs you want to go into. And if you do a little bit of research, you can definitely get into the good ones. Unfortunately, they recommend some of the ones that honestly aren't that great in the portfolio. They also charge a little bit more than I think you should be paying for this kind of app. But again, like I said in the last video, that's very similar to buying a soda at a convenience store, guys. You're getting a little bit of extra benefit. You're getting the convenience that, you know, you can just do this all from your phone. You can buy partial shares, things like that. Just remember, you're going to be paying a little bit more for that in the long run. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Unfortunately, it ran a little bit longer than I wanted it to. But anyways, guys, I've been David with Average Joe Investing, and I will see you guys soon.